Hi, I'm Suresh Venkat in conversation with Padmashri Vaudhya, Chief Technology and Strategy Officer at Cisco. Padmashri, welcome to the show. Thank you. You're very famed for your digital detoxes. Tell us about those. Yeah, so this is something I started doing about maybe a year and a half ago. I found that technology allows us to be connected all the time. So I was connected all the time and I was leading a very large organization with a number of engineers reporting to me at the time. And the fact that I would send them messages on the weekend would force them to work to get me the answers. And I thought there was the wrong behavior I was propagating, not just within myself, but within my team. So I started practicing what I call digital detox. Um, usually it's Saturdays when I'm not traveling and I take time off from um, any kind of device, uh, essentially for up to six to eight hours. And I do painting and writing poetry and, and things of that sort. And my team really appreciates it. Uh, because the fact that I'm not online allows them to have time to do things that they love doing. What is your personal technology favorites? What devices do you carry on you? I have an iPhone success and I like that a lot and um, I think for me my smartphone probably is the device that I cannot live with um, without. It's sort of uh, not just from a connectivity point of view. I take a lot of pictures, I access the internet, I'm on Twitter and apps like that a lot. Um, so smart device, smartphone, you know, someday it may be a watch, but today it's my smartphone. Forbes.com listed you as the 71st most powerful woman on planet Earth. Do you feel like the 71st <laughs> most powerful woman on planet Earth? I don't know what a 71st most powerful woman is supposed to feel like. I think I have a huge responsibility. Do you feel powerful? <laughs> I do feel powerful. I do feel that I have a lot of influence. And then my description of power is, influence and followership. And I think I value both of those greatly. I think the fact that I have a lot of influence, not just on Cisco's direction for technology, but also influencing where the industry goes, understanding the trends, making sure we as a company are making the right investments, allowing me to help our customers make the right kind of transitions. All of these to me um, are aspects of the influence that I have in the tech industry. Um, to me, power also means am I able to help others be successful? And to me, that's creating a followership. And uh, those two are things that I value greatly. What gives me most satisfaction, though, whether it's power or not, is leaving a legacy, making sure I've made a difference uh, in the job I'm in or in the company that I'm at. Good. Let's talk about influence and legacy. Once upon a time, the technology industry was an old boys club or a young boys club, actually. We see a lot of women in uh, positions in technology all across America. Do you see this trend going forward? I think it's the numbers are actually still very sadly low. But in, pretty high profile women in high in profile jobs. In the tech industry though, if you look at overall, uh, the mm -hmm. number of percentage of women is in the 20 to 30 percent globally. Mm -hmm. In the US is about 23 percent or so. And that's a very lo low number. And I think we do now have women in leadership positions, which is great. I'd love to see those numbers go up, not just as a CEO or C-level, but actually in the majority of the population. Uh, if you look at the tech industry, I'd like for that number to be 50-50. Someday I'd like to have a half our workforce be women. Uh, I think we are far away from that, but there's a lot of work, there's a lot of attention on the issue, which I'm hoping actually will, will accelerate the change there. Right, let's talk about Cisco for a little while more. Software-defined networks are touted as the next big thing in, in networking. Will this impact Cisco's strategy significantly? It already has in some, in some ways, not so much uh, just software-defined networking, but things that we call application-centric infrastructure. And if you think about where technology is going, and we're already here, uh, but I think more and more this will become uh, a more important trend going forward, and that is the move towards what I call an app economy. A lot of us really value apps and use apps more, and I think a lot of monetization of services is occurring through apps. Mm -hmm. uh, however, if you look at IT infrastructure, to date it had not been uh, very programmable to these applications. And as more and more applications become important, the infrastructure needs to understand what the application requires from it and be able to serve that up. And this is a notion that we started talking about about a year and a half ago that we call ACI or application-centric infrastructure. That is something Cisco is leading in and uh, we believe the future is really going to be about application-centric infrastructure. It's not just software-defined network, but it's how hardware and software works together to allow the application to perform better. In the slowdown of 2008, I read an interesting report that said Cisco is becoming a large competitor to airlines because people aren't flying for business meetings anymore. They're simply using uh, video conferencing and other networking technologies. 
So if Cisco can compete with airlines, completely unrelated, who can, which unrelated company can compete with Cisco? Yeah, I think that's a myth. I don't think we compete with airlines per it's, se. It's a nice anecdotal story it's, though. It, that's right, it's a great anecdote. It's a good, uh, it's a good uh, probably sound bite to have. But I think the point is that uh, the vision we have is to create technology that allows people to work from anywhere. Right? Now I'm here in India attending NASCOM. I have teams working on important projects around the world and for them, it shouldn't feel like there's a disruption, right? That I'm not there to give them guidance. It, it should be continuous. You know, they can reach me when they want. I can talk to them when I need to talk to them. And I use a lot of Cisco technology to do that. You know, whether it's telepresence or collaboration solutions or a new technology that we've deployed called Squared. Um, you know, that's really what uh, the vision is. How do you enable for someone who's in a remote location to feel as if they're right here in the room with you. And you know, that's, I think, the anecdote about you don't need to travel. You can actually be there without actually physically being there. Um, I think the, you know, who can disrupt us? Anyone can disrupt us. But I think the, the, the thing that we pride ourselves in is we disrupt ourselves. I think we okay. uh, believe in, as a company, we have to be agile, we have to be nimble. And we we sometimes fund engineers within our company to go to create, create disruptive, disruptive ideas. solutions. Okay. Right, final question, Padma Shri Do you get any time to watch TV? I do watch TV now. Have I you seen Silicon Valley, the show that's yes, it's I all the rage in India? Valley. It takes a lot of pot shots at the holy cows and all the holier uh, than thou you know, people. Laughing at yourself is uh, probably one of the greatest gifts that Silicon Valley. Did has. you spot yourself anywhere as in one of the characters <laughs> no, in Silicon Valley? No. <laughs> because it is a game of spot to real life equivalent. That's right. I love the show. I'm looking forward to the next season. All right, Padma Shri Thank you for talking to us. Thank you.